really interesting artists that are that are doing some amazing things with sound and and, uh, and this whole analog synthesizer revolution that's I feel like happened in the past I don't know it might have been going on for a while but I've just kind of gotten into it in the past mm -hmm. few years is really refreshing because analog synthesizers are real instruments they they mm -hmm. give you the sense of the sound actually being generated in front of you. Good morning, Evan. Hi, Petra. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good, good. Good to see you. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you here on Zoom. That's great. <laughs> I see a piano at the back there. That's yeah, your... this is my uh, area here where uh, I do, uh, I keep the piano at. Uh, I have another room that I have all of my uh, electronic equipment and everything, but I do, oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. I drag my, uh, my mics over here when I uh, <laughs> record the piano. Oh, so. really? Mm -hmm. Do, do you do you uh, uh, work mainly on the piano when you um, compose? Uh, yes, yeah. When I compose, it's mainly piano based. Um, I've done a lot of orchestral work and uh, things like that throughout the years, and uh, but it's always been the piano is my main instrument, uh, and I mean, really, the only instrument I feel proficient enough to do anything uh, substantial in. Uh, I always explain, uh, like writing for orchestra and writing for other instruments, kind of like a, a, a screenwriter, how a screenwriter who knows how actors are going to, uh, you know, act out the words that the screenwriter writes, but the screenwriter doesn't act those parts out. So. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the I understand. More you understand I, I understand everything about the, uh, you know, the, the limitations and the, uh, mm -hmm the ability for all these instruments and what they do, but that's better for somebody else to do than for me to write. <laughs> write oh, something. okay. Yeah. So, but did you study um, a composition uh, initially? I mean, or, or you you played the instrument, you say uh, piano is your instrument. So you've- Yes. First, uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I went, I have an interesting background uh, as Tell far me, as- I love Love oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I grew up in a, in a town of 400 people in Texas, in, in the United States. So yeah. a very, very, very tiny town. So I don't know if you know anything about the culture of that place, but it's very different than, you know, where I, where I ended up. I live in Los Angeles now and compose and mm -hmm. things like that. So uh, it, it, yeah, it was, it was a, a, a difficult journey as far as, when I be when I realize like oh I I'm an artist I want to do this for a living I want to pursue this as a career and beyond just you know doing it for a living and a career it's something that's incredibly personal and important to me and very individualistic and I feel like in the place where I grew up that wasn't really encouraged your individuality was not encouraged mm -hmm. as much so it was it was difficult but I, I made it through and and I got out and I went out to the university and. Originally, I was going to study for symphony conducting, so I was going to be a symphony conductor. And I studied with some conductors, and uh, they just, they, they I, I was on the fence for um, composition to conducting at the time. And they told me to go ahead and really think about what I wanted to do, because conducting is hard, composition is hard. So you really need to be true to yourself and, and what you want to do. And I got more interested in film at the time, and listening to composers of in the educational world, they use the word serious music, you know. <laughs> so, oh, okay, uh, yeah. so, so that's why I pursued composition and I ended up uh, moving from Texas. And I had a great time in my, at the university that I went to in Texas, uh, some mm -hmm. terrific uh, pr uh, professors and um, musicians just couldn't have asked for a better experience. Somebody who came from my background who, you know, didn't end up playing piano when they were four years old, like a lot of uh, musicians end up doing. I started a little bit later, but but that but it was all because I wanted to do it. Not, nobody ever forced it on me. But I was also lucky that my parents were very supportive of what I wanted to do. Oh yeah. And the, the older I get, the more I realize how incredibly important that is <laughs> to have. Well, parents. well, if I can just ask you about your your um, growing up in in such a small town. I mean, I grew up in South Africa, and, and in the 60s and 70s, you know, it was a, a smaller industrial town, and we didn't have a theater. So for us, there were there were not many 
options really you either play piano or you play i think there was one boy in our whole school who played the violin so it was not like you know like probably that you had as well in in a small town like that that you don't have that exposure so much um in the arts Did, was that also the case there yeah very much so uh it took a long time for me to come around to realizing what that is, you know, what the arts mm -hmm. is, what the, what a symphony orchestra is, what, you know, um, the lineage of, you know, classical music is and things like that. Like it took a long time, but I was always aware of it. Um, we have a PBS, the public broadcasting <laughs> in the United yeah, States, yeah. and they broadcast a lot of great, um, uh, you know, orchestral, so, uh, you know, events and things like that. So, when I was younger, I, I saw this, and that was my first exposure to seeing, um, you, you know, something like that. And I, and, I, and I think back, like I was probably five years old when I when I first saw an or, you know an orchestra on TV, and I was uh, taken by it. Like yeah, I think anybody is like, uh, yeah. and, and I and it, it it scares me that that is going away a little bit, and the, the the interest of that is dying throughout a lot of places that aren't you know major uh, cultural and artist hubs. But I think that it, it's uh, anybody that goes and sees that is going to be tremendously mm. overwhelmed by the sound and the, you know, everything that, yeah. that's gone into that, the history, the lineage and everything. So it's, mm. it's incredible. Yeah. Well, a part of, part of the series, well, the, uh, the, the moments in lockdown series I did, I really questioned this, you know, where, where do we start with, a pre, you know, the, people start appreciating the arts more and it's really I think with education and I have spoken to many artists in America already and I've found that there are pockets in America where there are great uh, f uh, um, uh, educational facilities for for music and then there are places where it's just not uh, you know existing so and I think it's a it's it's probably because also as I was told that America is such a huge country with so so much diversity really um, that that is the case. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, the the major cities the are cultural hubs uh, and they invest in orchestra, the arts, dance, ballet, mm -hmm. uh, opera. Um, you know visual arts and all that. So uh, Los Angeles, we have great museums. We have a fantastic orchestra here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's anything you want to do in this city, you can. I mean, it's one of the world's mm -hmm. largest cities. It's incredible. But yeah, where, where I came from, uh, not so much. You would have to go into, I mean, luckily I did live within a couple of hours from a large city. So as I got older, uh, when I was younger, I, I was able to uh, go and, you know, see an orchestra mm -hmm. and, and Things like that, and where I went to where I went to college, uh, it was much more uh, encouraging of the arts. But in a lot of these places, in, in the mid-sized cities in the United States, I really worry about these orchestras um, surviving. Mm -hmm. And there's there's just a lot of other things that we could get into also about the context of uh, you know I, I think a lot of I think a lot of cities are questioning whether or not this is worth keeping alive or not. Mm -hmm. And that's a scary thing. Is this just going to become kind of an academic relic or is this going to be something that we're going to preserve and, and uh, move on? And mm -hmm. they're being inundated with all these other questions about uh, new canon, uh, new, you know, new works, uh, works from all kinds of places, you know, places and things like that. So, but I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a big struggle and it, 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 it's looked at as something that's not quite a priority that mm -hmm. sports is because they will fund yeah. sports, especially where I came from. Like they will fund American football, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, for high school, but mm -hmm. they'll cut the arts program 100%, yeah. <laughs> you know, or yeah. a lot. I, I've heard that, <laughs> that, if, you know, everybody from America, talks this you know tells this story or this mm -hmm. talks this way but tell me now and and you then went from texas to la and uh, i went to seattle washington oh you uh, oh i see to study that's where you yes started. yeah okay. so i studied i apprenticed yeah. 
I didn't have a lot of money at the time uh, coming out of college, and I really didn't want to take on the debt of going to a uh, master's program for composition. Uh, and also at the time, I, I wanted to focus more on um, film music because I wanted to start oh, writing yeah. film mm. music. So hence, that's how I you know, made my way to Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> but we'll get into that later on. Uh, yeah. it, so I studied, I apprenticed with a composer up in Seattle who mm. was a film composer, but he lived in Seattle. And I thought, well, that's a much better transition if I move up there. Uh, so I packed my bags and I rented, rented a room <laughs> in a house online and I moved up there. And I lived there for six years and I studied and I uh, taught piano lessons. I, I built a really nice uh, piano studio up there. And, but about five years into it, I started coming down to LA from Seattle for meetings and people that you know, I was reaching out to and networking kind of functions and things like that. And I was able to start getting work and I got so much work that I was able to move down um, and Amazing. work full time as a composer. Mm. So, so then I worked for, a, I'm trying to think how many years that would have been. I worked for about roughly eight years in LA as a, as a studio composer. I had a staff composer job at a, uh, a music production house and I was trying to get into a position where I can score films uh, because I mean, that's what every composer wants to do. The industry was changing so much at the time that I was battling a lot of a business interest and moving projects to they were they were restructuring the the pay rates for composers at the time and we don't have a union. Um, so composers are the only non-union represented uh, sector in the, the film and TV industry. Actors, uh, cinematographers, director, you know, everybody else has a guild or a union that has set wages that protect them. And uh, composers have absolutely none of those protections. And it goes back to the old days of when the studio started. There were only a handful of composers, and they decided to not join the musicians' union. Um, so there isn't oh, there okay. isn't any protection yeah. on on composers. So these com these uh, companies started realizing, like, oh well, we can just siphon off composers' residuals, and nobody can stop us. And they're exactly right. So they they started doing that. So. On, I started getting disillusioned with the whole uh, business end of it. And I started realizing like, I'm not really writing anything that I feel good about. Like, I feel like this is all a means to, you know, fulfill um, some kind of career or job, you know, to make a living at and everything. And, and I, and I, it was working for me really well, but I just was not happy with anything that I was, that I was doing and uh, went through some other, personal issues as we do as we grow up <laughs> and, yeah. and I started realizing that uh, I'm not happy with my life this isn't what I set out to do I didn't set out to get into music to make music that I'm not happy with although I'm being paid well for it so uh, was this now was this now sort of uh, you you didn't have the freedom to compose what you really wanted to compose so you had to to work according to a company's... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much, but I was so busy also. I was working on so many projects and I was okay. really trying to... Well, what, what happened, um, what really happened was I was working as an in-house composer and a, and a big film came through that company and they wanted to hire the composer from the company. Uh, I demoed on it and I won the job. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, wow, here's my here's my ticket, you know, that's kind yeah, of what every yeah. composer is trying to do. Like, oh, I get that, I get the big opportunity. So I I, I did that, I, I left that job under some other dicey political <laughs> situations in order to do this uh, work on uh, on a contract. Mm -hmm. And it, it got messy. I mean, the, the company didn't want me to tell the production company that I was leaving the company to do it on a contract. Mm -hmm. And and I, but I, I, I was on a deadline to deliver music. So I had to leave my position at my job that was a pretty cushy job <laughs> and uh, go around and, and 
I was driving around LA trying to recreate my studio that was at that company and I, at my house and I had about three days to do it. So I had to buy all the equipment. To do that. And just, <gasps> it was a mess. It was a real mess. It really was. And at, at the end of it, uh, it, it turned out, I'm very, I'm very happy with what I did on the film, mm -hmm. but it, I, I just saw the ins and outs of the industry that I just wasn't, it just wasn't what I thought as nothing, nothing ever is, nothing's ever what you thought it was. And I was mm -hmm. very disillusioned by it. I, I worked great with the director. The creative people were fantastic. It was just the, the whole business end was completely mismanaged and the film's release was mismanaged. It was also at the time where films were having to decide if they were going to release in the theater or if they were going to release on a you know, streaming service like a oh, Netflix or something mm -hmm. like that. So they, they went with the theater because that was still the old model. It's funny how that's changed in the past five years and especially mm -hmm. the past year. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's another, that's mm -hmm. another industry that's completely on its, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, on its legs is, um, is the, is the uh, theater industry. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I finished the film and I was completely, I was very happy with it. It came out uh, worldwide. It was, it was, it was, a, I felt good about what I was doing, mm -hmm. but it, it, they didn't put the money into the advertising because they mismanaged the budget so much. They just mm -hmm. didn't have the advertising, the distribution deal didn't have advertising attached to it. So a lot of people just didn't see this film. And mm -hmm. uh, at the time I, I did film? get a, mm -hmm. oh, it was the Ratchet and Clank movie which oh, is okay. it's an it's an animated film uh i believe it's on netflix now um oh, okay. and everything. but yeah i know i'm i'm 100 happy with the work that i did and the creative mm -hmm. side of it was was wonderful but it just let me know that like i am not doing the work that mm -hmm. i originally wanted to do and a lot of other things happened in my life at the time i was I went through a divorce, <laughs> I went, you know, so it was just, yeah. you know, kind of a, a little bit of a life. Uh, early midlife crisis. So <laughs> yeah, that's what um, you call life. <laughs> life yeah, happens. yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> you know. as an artist, you, you know, your, yeah. your life is only, uh, a lot of times, you know, your art is only as good as, as your life is interesting. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, um, I realized that this is not really what I'm, what I want, what I wanted to do. And, and I started talking um, with some therapists about it and, and thinking that, you know, this, this is not, I, I don't feel good about what I'm doing. I might as well have just done anything else and, and just, just for money. Cause I feel like this is, I, this is just a job. Um, I'm not being respected. They're, you know, they're finding ways to undercut, the residuals and the pay all the time with mm -hmm. this and I ended up just saying I'm not doing this anymore mm -hmm. and I took some time off I was lucky enough to be able to be in the position to do that and started writing music for myself and started figuring mm -hmm. out but but I felt like I it felt to me like I had never written before because really? I, I, mm -hmm. I felt like I had been writing for a specific purpose for so long mm -hmm. that you're staring at a blank sheet of paper and mm -hmm. you're thinking like, I know exactly what needs to go on this paper, but I, I don't really know what I'm, what I want to say. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you study grammar and you understand all the rules of grammar <laughs> <laughs> and you understand yeah. and, and you've read all this grammar and how I, you know you've read tons of novels and and then you go okay I, I think I'm ready to write write one of these things and then you sit down and you're like wait I, I don't know I don't know what I want to say you know so mm. that's where I that's where I was at so I had to figure out what I wanted to say mm. and I just started experimenting with a lot of different things and I got to the point where I was doing work that I was completely obsessed with and in love with and I hired out some string players to record the, these pieces, and I, and I had a I had a, a, a label deal uh, that was going to release them that mm -hmm. fell through, uh, especially as COVID hit. Everything oh, yeah. just kind of just boom, yeah. everything went on on you know on the on pause, the yeah. which I was fine with because it it didn't. I, I didn't feel like I was missing out on, I mean, I mean personally, the whole situation is horrible with, with COVID in, in the mm. world, but in some, and it's been so unfortunate for so many people, but I felt like I was at a point that I needed 
a break from the world. I needed mm -hmm. a break to see where what, what I was going to, to do. So for me personally, it, everything slowed down and I, I've heard a lot of artists talk about this. Like they, they had time to breathe. Exactly. For, for a minute. Exactly. I mean, I, I did a, a, a whole series of interviews uh, and also I photographed uh, 500 artists here in their windows in Vienna. And, and mm -hmm. I must say it's honestly, you know, even though they were very um, heartbreaking stories, um, most artists felt this time as a time that they could breathe, you know, that they could just, uh, I mean, I, I spoke to a student who, who said, was the first time that in, in many years that she could actually with her friends go on a summer, like a holiday or no, not, not holiday, but, um, you know, to the beach and just not think about a concert or practicing or something that, or an exam or one sort of competition. So um, I totally agree with you there that I think it's, uh, it was in that sense, it was maybe also a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to say it was a, a, a good thing because I've I've known and had no, family. I, so, no. Yeah, and so many people that have lost their lives due due to this. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, but, I don't mean it that way. I don't. Yeah, mean it yeah. Good, I mean, for artists, in a, I mean it in a good way, and and I mean that it's, it was a good thing in the sense that I just think that this, despite of all these, and it's with everything in life, isn't it? They, there's many things that we that we experience daily that are little tragedies and that are little difficult circumstances but if we could manage to have and see the positive side of it or see the the benefits that we gained in these times then it makes whatever happens to you makes it uh so much easier to deal with you know so oh yeah absolutely um, yeah. yeah and there's going to be some great art coming out of this time yeah. as well and mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of it uh, but there, there's there's a lot of great art and mm -hmm. I, I think uh, yeah so I, I ended up releasing some music uh, at the beginning of this pandemic that I had had ready to go fantastic and mm -hmm. I, I released five pieces that I had recorded and mm -hmm. I was using I was I was using piano I was using strings and um, I, I've gotten really into uh, analog synthesizers and working with analog synths. And I, I wanted to get away from writing with computer, you know, I mean, mm. everything that's done with a, like a traditional kind of Hollywood composer, you know, studio is all like mm. in the box. It's in the, it's in the computer, it's sampled orchestra. It's all these, these little tools that they, that are available to you to get the job done as quick as possible without any really, um, I don't know, any, any real artistic direction yet. Mm -hmm. and, and I grew up with films where the composers were tremendously educated and they, they, they know how to orchestrate. And I just got, and I still am just, I don't mind saying this, I'm just very uninterested in film music at this point. I just mm -hmm. think that it's gotten to a place where it, it's just serving a purpose for some other commercial piece. And I'm, I'm not talking 100% of everything. I'm just saying like the majority of everything that I see is not really anything that I feel interested working on. I had, I had a meeting with a manager to maybe try to start doing some uh, scoring again. And I told them that and they were like, well, that's not really what we want to hear. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some films that I that I still love every year that come out. That I was like, wow, I would have loved to have worked on that. But mm -hmm. those, you know, no, nobody's really seeing those things. They're mm -hmm. still very small uh, uh, pieces, you know, pieces of work that are that are, you know, circulating and everything. Mm -hmm. But what I was able to see with the release of my music was that people were gravitating towards it and writing me personal letters about, wow, I, mm -hmm. I don't know what, I don't know how to describe this music. I don't know what this is. I don't know what, what it is, but it's just really great. I got a lot of those kinds of messages and a lot of uh, dance companies now are using my music, uh, have choreographed the music. Um, there's a, there's Amazing. a large, Mm. Yeah, there's a large uh, group in uh, a dance group in uh, Poland that mm. just used 
a lot of music from that EP that I released uh, that they choreographed and they they've made a, a dance film for it and they've made uh, they just performed on the uh, TV in Poland. <laughs> well, uh, from it. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's great. And then uh, here in uh, Los Angeles at the San Pedro de Arts Festival this weekend, uh, another dance group is uh, dancing to a, a choreographed piano piece that I wrote mm -hmm. recently that I'm going to release that piece on October 1st on, on Spotify. Oh, okay. And, and is it, so, uh, what, what is this piece called? Uh, it's called the dancer, so it, it was. Oh, I, I, I saw yeah. I saw on Instagram. Uh, oh, okay, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I wanted so to I, actually to ask you about that. So it's yeah. a new it's a new release that you have. Huh? Yeah, it's a new it's a new piece. Uh, it's recorded with the. Uh, it's a different version that they're going to be dancing to, mm -hmm. uh, and then the version that I'm releasing takes a lot more liberties with tempo and things like that. So they have to dance oh, okay. to a little mm -hmm. bit more <laughs> rigid uh, tempo. But yeah, this this piece is. It's very interesting because I recorded it with a felt piano or with, with a, a felt mute rail. I'm not sure if you're aware of, no. of, of that. Yeah, it's it's beginning to become very popular uh, and it's an incredible sound. So you you build, I built a felt rail mute for this piano behind me here. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you take the lid off and everything and you, you attach this rod that has um, felt uh, attached to it into oh, yeah? the piano. And uh, I didn't know I was gonna talk about it or I would have brought it over here from my other room. <laughs> and oh, okay. it. But, yeah. yeah, and then, so what it is is that you, the, so the, the, the felt is placed between the strings and the hammers. Mm -hmm. So the, the felt is here. So when the hammers come up to hit the strings, it hits the felt and it mutes it. Oh, so, wow. It, it it does a few things. It creates mm. a, a much different tone. It, mm. It's a much warmer and and uh, I wouldn't say darker, but it's just a very much warmer tone. It's a softer tone. But when you mic the piano a certain way, you pick up all of the other uh, nuanced sounds and mechanical sounds from your fingers on the keys and the inner workings of the piano. That it's uh, it, it's when you listen with that headphones. That sounds interesting. It sounds yeah, when you very listen with headphones, you sound like you're sitting on the bench with the pianist that's mm. that's um, that's playing it. Um, so there's a lot of great artists that are doing this right that are doing a lot of this kind of music right mm. now and I started listening to a lot of it and mm. I thought wow this is the most interesting thing and I think that we're really at um, uh, kind of a, a beginning of a piano revolution because I feel like the piano has been kind of the same thing for for about a mm. hundred years or so you know at least a hundred years I mean you know people have experimented with it and written pieces where you, you know, jam certain things in the keys and prepare piano and stuff like that, John yeah. Cage and, and stuff like that, or written pieces where you just sit there and don't do anything at all. <laughs> but um, but uh, I, I think that the piano is is about to have a real revolution uh, this century with people doing different things to it, recording it different mm -hmm. ways. There's a company, I think they're in Copenhagen, uh, that is building a small portable acoustic piano and it weighs about a hundred pounds and it sounds fantastic. There's a wait list for it right now and I can't wait to get one because really? you just mm -hmm. put it in your car. You, yeah, you can like take it off. You can take the soundboard off, put it put it in like a SUV car mm -hmm. and uh, it weighs about a hundred pounds and you can mm -hmm. travel around with it. And I thought, wow, this is great because the hardest thing for pianists is that we have to rely on oh, of thing, course. You yeah. know, a, a piano that we, I don't know mm. what that piano's going to sound like. You show up to play a show. I don't know what it sounds like. I don't know if it's in tune. I don't know. Mm. You know, but if you have your own, in, you know, your, your own instrument that you can take with you, that's revolutionary. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's. And, um, yeah. And um, um, so you find actually now that you have more freedom that you can experiment more. Yes. With, with Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm experimenting a lot with uh, felt piano, uh, analog synthesizers. Uh, I, I, yesterday, I was in my room with my mics recording uh, different sounds to incorporate, to, to affect, and to incorporate, and, and incorporate in this new uh, piece that I'm working on with uh, analog synthesizers and uh, felt piano. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's a little bit different of a direction than I've done before, but I've been listening to a lot of 
really interesting artists that are that are doing some amazing things with sound and and uh, and this whole analog synthesizer revolution that's I feel like happened in the past. I don't know, it might have been going on for a while, but I've just kind of gotten into it in the past mm -hmm. few years is really refreshing because analog synthesizers are real instruments. They, they mm -hmm. give you the sense of the sound actually being generated in front of you. And it's not just a computer recreating it, it oh, are, yeah. you know, playing yeah. like an audio file. Like, it, it, and there's a big, big difference in the mm -hmm. sonic texture and quality to these instruments uh, that I get why, the, why they're so, you know, important mm -hmm. and, and, and popular right now. <laughs> But uh, do you think that now, in, in because of the pandemic, that uh, they will be more experimenting? You know that they people will be film because, like you say now, you you've come from a, an industry basically where you have to do specific things. But now, you know, you have the freedom to compose what you want to compose, and and of course, it's all these things, all uh, forms of art. It, it goes through these stages and development and so on. But mm -hmm. I, I think I, I, I've, I've asked many uh, composers and also choreographers or, or, or if they think we will look back on this time and think, okay, that was exactly the time of the pandemic. That was around that time where people started, where things started changing, you know, and, and the ways of composing and the way the different sounds came out. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But we might we might not know what what's being done right now for another mm. 30, 40 years. <laughs> you know, we might I not be. You know, we, we always look back hindsight onto, oh, wow, yeah. that, that came out, out of that period. Oh, that person was mm. doing that there. Um, so, yeah, I would say that there's mm. tons of experimenting going on from all the people that I all the composers and uh, uh, sound artists that mm. I follow on social media and see what they're doing. There's a tremendous community of people doing some amazing stuff right now. And I, I don't know, it, it's interesting because you always think about, well, oh, what, wasn't it so exciting when so-and-so mm -hmm. was doing this back then, you know, when uh, Debussy was, was you know, writing in Paris or when uh, Mahler was writing his symphonies, or, you know, or, you know, something like that, some movement of of art uh yeah. and, and i kind of look at it as like well they, they weren't really aware that they were creating a movement of art you know actually just, yeah yeah we just realized that in hindsight so i think yeah. there's some amazing things going on right now mm. and uh it, it's allowed me to not want to look at things in hindsight but just mm. be in the moment and i think if anything this past year has taught us it's we just need to be in the mm. moment and allow ourselves to create what we're doing at that moment and not really think about, you know, how is this going to impact the future? Mm -hmm. What is the monetary value of this? Oh, like yeah. I've really tried to get away from thinking about that because that was one of the hardest parts about me coming to write is that, well, nobody's paying me to write this music. Mm -hmm. Nobody's, nobody's uh, expecting me to turn this music in. This isn't going towards anything. Mm -hmm. So what in the world do I have to say? You know, what do, what, what do I want to say? What do I want to communicate with myself? Mm -hmm. And I felt that I knew I had enough experience writing so much music that I was able to just slow down and write things that were very important to me. And, and honestly, I didn't care if anybody else even liked it. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. just something that I needed to do as an exercise for myself and my own mental state from being you know, uh, just kind of gone through some really bad situations that in, in the industry of, you know, commercial music that I, you know, yeah. just didn't want to deal with any. Mm -hmm. But now what is, what is the dream now for you? Oh, well, I mean, the, the dream is just to continue making interesting music that mm -hmm. I am, in, that I'm enjoying making. And I'm, I, I think people are, are coming to listen to that and it seems to be working, but honestly, that's, I would love to be able to start performing uh, if we can get that going again. <laughs> I, I mean, I know, oh, the, okay. yeah. I know in, in Europe that they started shutting down shows again uh, because of, of COVID. I've heard a lot of people starting to uh, uh, put their shows on hold, but 
uh, concerts are coming back in, in the United mm -hmm. States and Los Angeles. They're, they're starting up again. So, I mean, my goal is to start performing live uh, with a, mm -hmm. either an ensemble with, my, with the string quartet that I was working with and analog sense and uh, my piano work mm -hmm. to, to do that and to create some kind of show around it. I, I've talked, I've been talking with a few different people about getting that going possibly. Mm -hmm. But I just need to be able to write music for myself and to be happy with what I'm writing. And I, I think I, I spent so long trying to please somebody else yeah. <laughs> with what I was writing mm -hmm. that I, I'm I'm done with that. Like I'm mm -hmm. I'm really just working on the music that I want to write and what mm -hmm. I think I need to serve mm -hmm. the art with. And that is the number one goal to be successful yeah. for, for well, myself. I uh, you know, I think always when you find that, when you get to that point where you where you can do that and where you can say, well, I'm not, um, or rather than I want, I'm going to do something where I can express myself uh, or express, express myself <laughs> uh, the way that I want to or, or how I feel like it. I think it's a very important place and I think it's, from here on, you know, you will be able to do it. And I think also that people that hear your music will be able to sense that as well from you, from where it's coming, you know? So I think it's very positive that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and also I, I think that what I've seen on the film side is that the more interesting films and the filmmakers that are out there, they're seeking out more interesting musical artist and mm -hmm. they're not just hiring the people that are on the studio's list of like well here's the acceptable people that you can yeah. hire because we know they're mm -hmm. not going to you know mess it up yeah. uh so they're, they're being more experimental with who they're looking for and i would love to work on another film and in, in more of an experimental mm -hmm. fashion with uh, with music and and uh be able to provide more of a, a of an artistic voice with an artistic mm -hmm. you know film so, um, well, it's been, uh, um, I've heard that many people who, who express their wishes on this platform, uh, that their wishes came true. So all right. you just, oh, yeah, <laughs> you just wait and see, and yeah. you let me know. <laughs> <Great>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, I think it's possible. And I think really uh, after this time, um, more and more people are going to feel the same way as you. And, and you know, it's like you say, I think more independent filmmakers are going to also do their thing. And I think that the the market will change a little bit. Mm, now, yeah. And, now. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that uh, there's just a lot of things going on right now. Everything's pivoting yeah. around. Nobody really knows where it's going to land, but there's just a certain kind of mainstream mm. content or whatever they call it now that, that is just so tired. And mm. I think people are still looking for something really yeah. different and it's time for that. And it, and it will happen through, through from all this mm. that's happened in the past couple of years. And, um, you know, but I've always, I've always been attracted to more of the oddball stuff anyway. So if I can just keep working. Oh, is it? Up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But Evan, this was so lovely to talk to you. And please keep me updated when you have, uh, when you do your your concert, um, and we can talk about that if you want. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and um, and well, I wish you all the best. And um, I'm so happy to hear that you do your own thing. I think it's always very important that artists do that. You know, be authentic and and. Um, and I think the best work will come from you when you do your own thing. Yeah, yeah, and I totally um, agree. Mm, yeah, it, mm. you feel more successful when you when exactly. You do yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, have a wonderful rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Thank you very much. Yeah. It nice and it was, it was, yeah, it was lovely to talk to you too. Okay, bye. okay Evan. Okay. See you. Bye. bye.